two terabyte solid state drives. Sounds like a dream, right? WRONG! They are actually pretty affordable these days, and not just by Bangsawan standards, you guys should be able to afford them too. With SSDs packing serious TVs, the gap between SSD or solid state drive and HDD hard disk drive is surprisingly close these days. But what is M.2? What is MBME? What is 2.5 inch? What is PCIe? And what is SATA? I mean, SATA. Huh. Today, at your mother notice, I'm gonna teach you all about the solid state drive because it's the only D you will ever need. Solid ma, but maybe not as hard as the hard drive ma. Full disclaimer, this video is brought to you by Transcend because they sent over these three drives for demonstration purposes. We do reserve our right to an unbiased opinion as usual. And anyways, this video is actually a class to help you upgrade your knowledge about your storage. So you won't simply buy, waste money until you have to eat <laughs> porridge. Moving on, let's talk about the SSD. First of all, what are solid state drives? As the name suggests, solid state drives are in a solid state, which means that there are no moving mechanical parts inside and the data is stored electronically in flash memory as compared to conventional hard drives where the data is stored in spinning disk. The advantage of this design allows solid state drives to be made smaller, like this, and also give you faster transfer speeds. And they are more impervious to mechanical damage such as from drops or shocks. Just to give you an idea, the HDD actually has quite a few more potential points of mechanical failure. There's the spindle, the read write head, and even the actuator. They're also a little bit more sensitive to magnetic fields and vibrations. Bad vibes, not good vibes. One of the only reasons people still consider HDD these days is of course the lower dollar per gigabyte ratio, making the HDD still quite a bit cheaper than the SSD, especially at higher capacities. Also, consumer HDDs can go up to 8TB and even 12TB, while SSDs over 2TB is actually still rarer than a Malaysian driver that uses his signal lights properly. I'm talking about you. Now that we got the basics covered, let's talk about the different form factors of SSDs. And the two main types in consumer SSDs are 2.5 inch, which kind of looks like your laptop hard drive, and this is the Transcend SSD 230S or M.2, which kind of looks like these two Transcend SSDs. <laughs> the first one is the Transcend 220S, and the other one is the 830S. Firstly, the 2.5 inch form factor is chosen due to its intercompatibility with your regular hard drives, especially in laptops. Now, because it's using the same SATA interface as your hard drives, you can just put this into your laptop to upgrade your storage using the same connectors and cables. Once SSDs become more mainstream, the industry needed a new standard, and as it turns out, the flash memory and all the circuitry involved can actually be packed into a much smaller package than this 2.5 inch form factor, and this will help make portable devices such as laptop either smaller or free up space for other components. Today, that new form factor is known as M.2, although it was briefly known as NGFF or next generation form factor for a while. But the boomers thought it wasn't cool enough. Much like how my mother actually tried to call me Benjamin. Benjamin Tan. Pen Tan. Mum, ring any bells? Before M.2 was born, there was another standard called MSATA and if you're older than the dinosaurs, you've probably seen it in older laptops. Like the dinosaurs, it was very short-lived because two years later, the M.2 came out and these guys support both PCIe and SATA while the MSATA only supported <coughs> SATA. Now this is where things get confusing. All these names, M.2, SATA, PCIe, what are these? Can eat one ah? To keep things simple for you sims, M.2 is the form factor. PCIe and SATA are interfaces that the SSDs run on. Don't understand ah? Okay, look, 
These two are M.2 SSDs. The left one here is the PCIe one and is the SSD220S. And the one on the right is the SATA SSD and this is the SSD830S. They look the same, but they are different. So what's the diff between SATA and PCIe? SATA is of course the standard that we're pretty familiar with until now because we've been using it with our hard drives while PCIe is the same interface as the one that we use with our graphics card. It has a higher bandwidth and allows for much faster maximum write speeds and read speeds compared to SATA. Back in the day, before M.2 was a thing, expensive SSDs were actually working and made with PCIe buses that are exactly the same as what you use to put in your graphics card. And since they were not using uh, any standard spec interfaces, they were actually very expensive. In order to achieve the universality and convenience like the USB where it is plug and play, they needed a standardized interface so that your operating system such as Windows would only need one common device driver to be able to run all SSDs essentially. SSD manufacturers would no longer have to put in extra resources to develop a custom interface drivers and this will help them save costs and potentially lower the prices of PCIe SSDs to our favor. Cheaper SSDs, you don't wanna. And this is why NVMe or Non-Volatile Memory Express is born. It is basically a communications interface and driver designed specifically for PCIe-based SSDs. That is also why M.2 PCIe SSDs are commonly referred to as M.2 PCIe NVMe SSDs. Now with all the confusing, confusion stuff out of the way, let's just look at performance. Just to give you an idea, the maximum read and write speeds of a SATA SSD with a SATA 3 interface is 6 gigabits per second or up to 600 megabytes per second. Of course, if you use a USB adapter, then your maximum transfer speeds will be determined by your USB standard and that could be USB 3.0, 3.1, 3.2 and so on. For PCIe SSDs, there's actually now a Gen 4 standard but Gen 3 is still much more common in the market and is a lot more affordable. There are PCIe Gen 3 X2 SSDs which are the slower ones and they have a transfer speed up to 2GB per second and that is still 3.33 times faster than SATA. Then we have the PCIe Gen 3 X4 SSD such as this SSD 220S from Transcend and the max achievable transfer speeds are actually up to 4GB per second. Also, with DRAM cache, this SSD in theory should perform better than SSDs with no DRAM. Of course, there are real world numbers that you should be more concerned with. Just as a reference, here are some benchmarks with these three SSDs. Now that you have a better understanding about SSDs, let me give you a few more tips before you run out there and buy your SSD. If you're buying an M.2 SSD, make sure that your motherboard supports the interface of the SSD that you intend to buy. Some slots only support SATA M.2 and some only supports PCIe, but there are some that supports both. Check it out before you buy. Some M.2 SSDs use the B key which supports up to two PCIe 3 lanes. Others use the M key like this Transcend SSD 220S which supports up to four PCIe 3 lanes. To maximize compatibility, there are even SSDs that use the B and M key which can fit both types of slots like this Transcend SSD 830S. So, make sure that you have the right key for the right slot. There are actually different lengths of M.2 SSDs. The most common ones are 2230, uh, 2242, 2260, and 2280. Just compare and make sure that the length of your SSD does not exceed the maximum supported length on your mother. Or, that's what she said. 
The next tip is that you should look out for SSDs that come with a DRAM cache. And yes, you're right, it's the same DRAM on your RAM stick. So a DRAM cache will make your SSD feel a lot more snappier because DRAM is just faster. Some cheaper SSDs actually don't come with DRAM cache, so watch out for those. See, these Transcend SSDs all write big big on the front when it comes to the DRAM cache. Transcend wants to make sure that you know this is the good stuff and you don't simply buy the wrong one. Nice right? Buy la! Wait for what? Also, there's the issue with different NVMe controllers which will determine the transfer speeds as well as TBW or terabytes return of your SSD. Terabytes return will measure the endurance of your solid state drive because it calculates how, how much you can write to your drive before it fails. Usually SSDs with higher capacities will have higher TBWs and generally last longer, which makes them more suitable for people like content creators who need to constantly write to and wipe their drives. For gamers, this won't be much of an issue because once you install your games, your files will sit in your drive. Unless you are a game boy who jumps from game to game every few weeks. I'm talking about you, boy. Finally, to address some of your concerns about the durability of the SSD, there is actually a very minor issue and that's regarding how SSDs usually fail. With HDDs when they fail, provided that the damage is not too extensive, you can usually save some if not all of the data. But with SSDs when they go kaput, in most cases, all your data is gone. Which is why we recommend that you use a storage monitoring software such as HDD Sentinel to help keep you informed about the health of your drive. So those are all the nuggets of knowledge that I have to give you that your mother didn't teach about the SSD. If you are still using a hard drive, it's time to switch. And also don't forget to check out Transcend's products. We really thank them for sending these over because if you go to the links in the description below that we put there, you can buy these drives at the cheapest price on Lazada because that's where I'm going to find all these things and do all the research. I guarantee you, you're not going to pay more. It will support us a little bit and also show Transcend that we're actually doing our job to educate you guys. If you thought this video is awesome, don't forget to give us a like and share. Leave a comment down below. Let us know what storage you're using and why. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to see more content content like this, follow us on Facebook and Instagram to see more shenanigans from the Mob House team. And I will see you in the next YOM!